So another lovely castle. Uh, this is called Ross Castle. This is in Killarney, Ireland. And interesting subject, but let's take let's go to the develop module. And let's take a look at the histogram, which to me is the most important thing when you're doing a landscape. Protect the highlights that need to be protected. Now, as we take the cursor and move it over the clouds, if you look at the bottom of the histogram over here, as I do that, you can see 87s, 86, yeah, 87 is actually 89. And if we look at the side of the castle, yeah, we're at the 80s. Over in here, oh, we got some 90s. But as long as we don't hit past 99.9, .9, that means we can save that data. Now, conversely, we've got these two arrows things up here. This is the highlight warning clipping, and this is the shadow clipping. Now, it's telling us, because this one's lit up, that there is something in here that is pure black. And if we look down at the bottom, there's some uh, rocks here in the mud. All right, there's, there's the stuff that's 100% black. That means there's no changing it. There's no bringing it back. It's 100% black. Do we care that there's 100% black under some of the rocks? No, we don't. But what we did care about was protecting the highlights. So this is a fairly basic thing that happens all the time. So let's do an edit on it. Now, first, I know it's driving people nuts. You can see the castle isn't quite exactly straight. It's leaning to the left a little bit. So let's go ahead and click on the crop tool over here. And I'm going to use, I could do it by eye, but I'm going to use the tool, the angle tool, and click on the top of the castle in between the light and dark and just drag down through that thing that should be straight up and down. Let go, and now the castle's perfectly straight up and down. And if I want to make sure I can get the most out of the left and right, I'll just crop a little bit in so I can come in left and right and hit enter. Okay, so we've got that taken out of the way. Uh, before I go any further, I'm going to do a command uh, apostrophe, control apostrophe or on Windows, just to make a virtual copy on this, just so I have one that I can get back to. Now, what are the problems? Well, obviously, shadows are way too dark. Highlights are too bright. Um, compositionally, we need to work on it. We need to add some drama to this. However, we've got a boat over here. This is There's boat rides here, and I find them a distraction. And if you want to remove stuff, you need to do it before you start making any changes in the basic panel. Once you start doing this, if you do generative fill or generative generative remove <coughs> excuse me was it a question there nope okay uh, if you're going to use those tools you got to do it first because if you try to do it after the fact it's not going to see all these adjustments you made so let's click on the eraser tool and we're going to use this one with generative AI because I want to get rid of this boat or boats so I'm just going to drag over those and click on remove and let's see how good a job Lightroom does at getting rid of these. And that was pretty nice. We get three options. So let's see, one, two, I like that. Hmm, that's got less of a distraction. Don't like that. This building isn't really there and it's a distraction. That's better. So we're gonna go with that. I'm just gonna hit enter on that. And now that's gone. So now we can, is there anything else that needs to go? I don't think so. I kind of like the these these bushes here, the grass. Let's start with the basics. So I'll hit enter to get out of the generative AI. And let's start with the basics. Let's open the shadows all the way. And you see how there's all kinds of stuff going on over here. I'm going to also bring down the highlights a lot. A little more than I need because what this is going to do is it's going to open up the right side of the image a little bit and allow me to open up the exposure a little more. Okay, and you could say, oh, gee, all right, I want to be done with it. That's fine, but I don't feel that way. I don't feel we're done yet. I want to add some more drama and separation and depth into this image, and we're going to do this with some light and with color. First, let's deal with the sky. I'm going to click on the masking tool up here and select the sky. Pretty good job. So let's scroll down. I'm going to add some dehaze to the sky. I want to darken it up and bring some more depth to the clouds. Kind of like putting on polarized sunglasses. That does, that does a pretty good job. 
Uh, let's see what else. What else do I want to do here while we're in the white room? The castle itself. I've been here a, a handful of times, and this castle is not that neutral of gray. It's a little bit warmer color than this. But again, you remember your camera can only capture one color temperature, and it went for the blues and greens that are all over the scene. So let's get a brush and create a new mask. And of course, the keyboard shortcut for brush in Lightroom is K. Uh, the Adobe people did a, went really overboard to make sure none of their commands had anything to do with the keyboard shortcut letter. Uh, this would in Photoshop would be a B, of course, but no, not here. So remember K. So I'm going to click on brush, and I have auto mask on. And since I have auto mask on, I'm not sure, I'm sure many of you know this, but with auto mask chosen, see I have my big circle here. If I click here. Notice it doesn't touch the sky. It only selects the things that match what's underneath that crosshair. So I'm going to undo that. If I turn, I hit K again. If I turn off auto mask right over here and do this, notice it goes up into the sky because it's just going to use the shape of the brush. So that's not what we want for this. We do want the auto mask turned on. And I'm going to start by selecting the bright parts of the castle, this, these white, uh, the sunlit pieces. And that's kind of the key here. This is being hit by the morning sun. So I'm going to select these white areas. Notice it just picked up a little of the clouds there. We'll, get, we'll fix that in a second. I'm getting these spots that are getting hit by the sun. And I'm going to include that in the reflection in the water. Select the same places. And since we have a little bit in the clouds, if you hold down the Alt key or right click, it turns it into a minus. And that allows me to just paint over the areas that I did not want. So what do I want to do to this to create more depth in the image? I'm going to change its color temperature. I'm going to warm it up. So let's come down to color and we're going to push it over to the yellow a bit. Because this, this is the sun illuminating thing, so that's better. It's also a little too bright. Let's bring the exposure down a smidge. And let's add some clarity to the stone. Much better. Now let's do it again with the shadows, because the shadows are a little bit too blue as well. So we'll hit K again. And now I'm going to do the same thing and just click on the shadow spots. And we'll do the same thing in the reflection. Got a little water there. We'll get that in a second. So again, I hold down the Alt key, turns it into a minus. And I still have auto mask on for the tool. And there we go. All right, so let's do the same for that. We'll scroll up. Uh, exposure wise, do we want it darker? Uh, maybe a little, actually a little lighter. And let's warm it up once more. We'll take the slider and see as we come over, I can make it very yellow. Oh, and I see as I've done this, I picked up some of the clouds back in this, the mountains back there. So we're going to have to subtract those. But let's just add a little warmth into there. And I'm going to do the same clarity. And I'm going to add a little dehaze, which is going to add some contrast to it. But while I'm here, I'm also going to scroll down and click on subtract. And I'm going to subtract with a brush. And I want to get this area right here that it picked up because it was starting to make that warmer. And now we have two different color temperatures going on. And that looks a lot better. In fact, if we hide this, here's the before and after. Look at the color temperature change, how it separates out the castle from the rest of the image. And if we scroll down, we can see the highlight part, same thing. Here's the before and after. And it look, the whole scene looks so much better. Excuse me. Joe, yes. Joe, I have a quick question because I, I have a tendency to always push texture and clarity, and I don't know when I should use both or one or the other. Okay, good question. Um, let's see. Do we want to do that? Now? Yeah, well, let's talk about that Put now. It on the side of the building. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about texture and clarity. They are similar. Let's zoom in to say, oh, it's 67%. Let's see who that is. Okay. What is the difference between the two? Texture is clarity on very fine points. So let me hit enter to get out of our masks and let's go down to texture clarity. So I'm going to bring up, actually, let's see, let's just select 
something smaller. Uh, now I guess we'll just use one of the existing masks we already used. So let's go to, you mentioned the highlights. So let's select that. That's the, not the highlights. Where'd my highlight mask go? Here it is. Okay, there's the highlights. Okay, let's take a look. Texture versus clarity. Texture is for fine details. I don't know if we're even going to see it. Let's go to 100% and get closer. When we add texture, that sharpens fine detail. If I overdo it, you can see it's starting to show up. Uh, believe it or not, the texture slider was designed originally to smooth skin. Mm. If you take texture and you make it between minus 20 and minus 30, uh, it makes skin look absolutely lovely. Uh, but you know, I, will do, I will do it on um, some images. But since this was stone, something that really had a lot of heavy texture into it, uh, I decided to cut to the chase and go to clarity. Uh, but okay. but if you're dealing with something that has a very fine texture, um, let's. I think I have a, an image. I can we can we can do that in. Just hold on. Uh, the next demo I do, we'll we'll deal with where texture is going to work better. Okay, thank you. Okay, all right. So let's hit enter on here. Now, how can we make this thing more powerful? I would like to crop it. In fact, I'd like to crop out some of the bottom. The problem is I don't want to lose the reflection. And I think what we have to do is we've got to send this thing into Photoshop because the things I want to do to it aren't, gonna, aren't really done in Lightroom. So I'm going to go to Photo, Edit in Photoshop, or Command or Control E. I'm on a Mac, so it's Command. If you're Windows, it's Control E. And that will take this image and open it up in Photoshop. And here it comes. Okay, here we are in Photoshop. First thing. Select the layer, Command or Control J to make a duplicate so I have one that's not messed with. And what I want to do is I want to compress this. I want to make it as if I had maybe got, I had sat on the ground to take this image. And so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to use the marquee tool and select the bottom half of the image, this entire thing. And we're going to use free transform, which is edit free transfer, command T. What you do is, if you want it to just go in one direction, hold down the shift key and click. And I'm going to squish this thing a bit just to compress it as if, again, I was sitting down on the, the, the rocks here or laying in the mud, whatever it took to get the shot. And by doing that, now we've put a little asymmetry into it. But this would have happened if I was willing to lay down in the mud, which I was not. Um, one other thing while we're here, I don't know if any of you use the Nick filters and for a landscape like this, that has a lot of contrast and a lot of pop to it. I want to add a little bit more to it. So up under filter, I'm going to go to the Nick collection eight. If you're, don't, if you're a landscape person, actually, if you're a landscape portrait or you're a wildlife person, you should have the Nick collection here. And this is all the filters I'm going to use with Vesa and just add a couple of little bit of sliders and watch what happens. So I'm going to scroll over. This is a before after slider. I'll move it over to the left and I'm going to add structure. And let's see, maybe a little saturation. Let's see. You can overdo it easily. Just a couple of points. And also I'm going to add a little warmth to it because watch the warmth slider. No, nope, it can go very fast, get it very wrong. But watch just a little bit of warmth, just less than 10%. And now I can drag across to see the before and after. And look at how it has separated out the image. It really is, is a remarkable set of filters, and I highly recommend it. And there we go. And I don't need this bottom part anymore. In fact, I could at this point flatten the image, but I don't want this stuff down here. So if you command or right click on the thumbnail, it gives you whatever's on that layer, which is our now new entire image. Then I just come up to image and tell it to crop it. And there we go. Now I could flatten the thing. I'm just going to hit over here. I'm just going to tell it to flatten the image because I don't need those layers anymore. Now I'm just going to command S or control S to save this. That will send it right back into Lightroom, right next to where we started. And here's our 
edit as it left Lightroom. Come on. There's our edit as it left Lightroom. And here is our edit from Photoshop. And notice now with the reflection being shorter, it's not competing as much with the castle. Now, one last thing I'm going to do here is under effects, we're going to use the post crop vignetting. Now, I'm going to drag it all the way over so we can see what shape it is right now. Uh, the midpoint will bring it in further or take it out. Uh, actually, you know, I kind of like just the 50, the right in the middle. Roundness. You can see what it's doing here. Again, roundness, I kind of like a little bit less than middle on that one. And then feather, how far do you want it? You want a hard edge? Do you want a really soft edge? I'm going to go a little softer. And what the highlight slider, by the way, does is it allows the highlights to shine through the vignette. So if I start pushing this over, like notice the cloud up here. As I push this out, it lets them in. But we're not going to use the vignette this heavy. I just did that so you could see what's happening. I'm going to bring the amount back down to, oh, 12 or 15, something like that. 13 is fine. And if, if you look at it now, does it look like I did anything to the image? Not really, but if we hide this temporarily, look at the difference. Now you get to see the slight darkening of the vignette around the edges. And that again re-centers re you into the image. So let's take a look and see the journey we took. Here is our original raw file. Here's our edit in Lightroom. Notice we got rid of the boat. And we fixed the shadows and changed the color, temperature of the castle. But then we brought it into Photoshop to tighten things up a bit. And look what that does to the image. How much more prominent it makes the castle in the image. And I still admit that I love the grasses here. I, I left them there intentionally because I like them.